you're fired, said the new branch manager at the bank. I had worked there for many years until she claimed this, just a few days after starting her job. Understood. I resigned with a spiteful smile, thinking, just you wait and see. The next day, an account with $700 million was abruptly cancelled. What? Following this sudden account closure, a series of unexpected and dramatic events began to unfold at the bank. My name is Tiffany Stewart. I'm 55 years old. I've been working at the local bank since graduating from community college, initially starting as a clerk. Now I've stepped back to let the younger, charming bank employees handle the front only stepping in when specifically requested by customers. I'm always ready to assist the young ones, supporting them from just behind them. Watching them grow is like nurturing my own children. It's immensely fulfilling. By the way, I've been married to my husband for 32 years. He's two years older than me, a diligent engineer at an electrical company who hates dishonesty. He's a wonderful confidant always ready to listen to my trivial stories and offer sound advice. We were blessed with two children, but they're married and have moved out. So now I live a peaceful life with my husband. Recently, a new branch manager was appointed to our bank. Her name was Lisa. She's still young, only 40 years old, and probably the youngest of the branch managers assigned here in recent years. I saw her for the first time during her introductory speech at the morning meeting. She seemed tough and strong-willed. Under my leadership, this branch will become more vibrant and achieve the best performance nationwide. I need everyone's cooperation, so let's work hard together. Her clear and firm manner of speaking wasn't really my cup of tea. After the meeting, the assistant branch manager began showing Lisa around. He was introducing Lisa to the staff. Following our usual routine of cleaning after the morning meeting, I began wiping the windows by the waiting area. Then Lisa and her group approached. Mrs. Stewart, may I have a word? Of course, what is it? I responded with a smile. This is Lisa, our new branch manager. Lisa, this is Mrs. Stewart, our longest serving employee who's been here for about 35 years. If you have any questions, she's likely to have the answers. As the assistant branch manager introduced me, Lisa scrutinized me as if evaluating me. Tiffany Stewart, pleased to meet you. I'll do my best, but I'm not as capable as the assistant branch manager makes me out to be. I greeted Lisa, feeling a bit tense in front of her assertive presence. Nice to meet you. Somehow you suit window cleaning. Excuse me? As I stood there stunned, Lisa laughed. I thought you were a janitor. My mistake. If I have questions, I'll come to you, Mrs. Stewart. See you later. Sorry about that, Mrs. Stewart. Uh, sure. Then they moved on to the conference room. I had never been mocked so blatantly upon a first meeting. What a rude person. Turning to a young girl tidying up scattered magazines nearby, I couldn't help but ask, Hey, do I really look like a janitor? Not at all, Mrs. Stewart. You definitely have a dependable mom vibe, but you also carry the aura of a veteran banker. That branch manager's got a nasty attitude on her first day. I can't tell if that's a compliment or not. As we chatted, I thought maybe asking the young girl wasn't the best idea. But being called mom-like might not be entirely off the mark. I do tend to fuss over the younger ones. Sometimes I think I might be a bit too nagging. Afterwards, the assistant branch manager continued showing Lisa around, but it was her behavior that dominated the conversations in the break room. I was listening in, and it seemed like nobody had a good impression of her. Given her attitude, that seemed about right, but who knows, maybe she's as capable as she appears. As she said in the morning meeting, maybe it takes someone as assertive as her to lead and expand this branch. I decided it's not good to jump to conclusions, and resolved to observe her for a while. After work, I went home and told my husband about Lisa. He seemed displeased upon hearing about her. That sounds like an unpleasant addition, since you can't just run away from your job, just try not to interact with her as much as possible. He consoled me. I decided to stay away from Lisa as much as possible. At the morning meeting the next day, 
The assistant branch manager announced he would be away for four days on a business trip and asked us to manage things in his absence before leaving quickly. Lisa was sitting at her desk, arrogantly reading the newspaper. I was called over by Lisa and wondering what she wanted approached her. Can't you see I'm reading the newspaper? She said. Confused, I watched as she sighed and looked exasperated. Don't you get it? Could you make me coffee? What? Uh, okay, I'll get it for you. I was surprised. What arrogance. I went to the break room to prepare her coffee and found another male employee venting his frustrations to a female colleague. He was upset because Lisa had criticized his performance from last month. True, his contracts were the lowest, but it seemed like a fluke since he's usually not like that. She said these results are unacceptable and that I need to strive for better. Just my luck that the deals I was working on last month got delayed to this month. She just got here and already has such an attitude. I had come to the break room just to make coffee, but I found myself wanting to complain too. I didn't say anything, trying to be the bigger person, but inside I was shouting, What's with this branch manager? From then on, every morning as she started reading the newspaper, she would command me to bring her coffee. The day before the assistant branch manager was due back from his trip, Lisa approached me while I was working. Mrs. Stewart, do you have a moment? Yes, what is it? What exactly is your job here? Lisa's sudden question caught me off guard, but I answered. Currently, my main role is assisting with the clerk services. Is that all? No, I also do things like cleaning the branch and checking the parking lot. So you're not really doing anything significant, right? I was stunned. Well, perhaps not. See, we're planning to bring in cleaning robots for the bank. That means your job will be redundant, won't it? Her words were loaded with implication. Um, what exactly are you suggesting? Lisa put pressure on me. Even the clerk support, a staff member can handle that alone. You're just helping out. That's a waste of labor costs, don't you think? So, are you saying you want me to quit? That's right. There's no need to keep someone who can't contribute productively, is there? I just looked at Lisa in silence. She was looking down on me. What a company needs is a young, promising talent. Don't you agree? Old people who just collect the salary should be weeded out early. Lisa said this with a forced smile, then leaned in close and whispered in my ear. Useless old-timers like you are no longer needed. You're fired. Having been told this, I saw no reason to continue working here. Understood. It's too bad, but I'll accept it. It was mutually agreed that Lisa would fire me. I have a lot of paid leave left. How long should I keep coming in? Oh, is that so? Well, you don't need to come in starting tomorrow. All right. It was short, but thank you for everything. Saying this, I hurried to start my resignation process. Lisa, seemingly pleased with herself, returned to her desk with a satisfied look. I felt frustrated at being manipulated into resigning, but also felt a sense of relief at leaving. If she's written me off as incompetent, she's probably mistaken. Imagining what might happen next, I couldn't help but smile. Mrs. Stewart, Mr. Young is here for you. A staff member at the reception informed me that one of my clients had arrived. Having worked at the clerk window for over 30 years, I naturally developed close relationships with many clients. Mr. Young has been trusting and using this bank for over 20 years because of me. Thank you, I'll be right there. Well, I guess this will be my last time to see these clients. It's a pity I can't say goodbye properly due to the lack of a transition period. I feel very sorry for that. I know I must provide my best service to the clients today. With this thought, I headed to where Mr. Young was seated. As my last day at work turned out to be so sudden, I said my farewells to my colleagues in the locker room after finishing my duties. They were shocked at my abrupt resignation and openly expressed their anger towards the branch manager. How can she not understand how much we rely on you, Mrs. Stewart? Who will we turn to in times of trouble once you're gone? That's right, and it's not just us. Many of the longtime clients also depend on you, Mrs. Stewart. They looked like they were about to cry. I'm also worried about the clients. I'm sorry to leave without saying goodbye, but if they ask about me, 
Please explain the situation. You got it. We'll take care of it. Thank you. I'm really sorry for the abrupt resignation. If you ever have any trouble, feel free to call me. With that, I bid farewell to the bank I had served for many years. The next day, around lunchtime, I received a text from one of the bank staff. I read the text as I was sipping tea. This morning, Mr. Young came to the bank and cancelled all his accounts. He said if Mrs. Stewart isn't here, there's no reason to keep his money with us. Mr. Young was the only client I managed to bid farewell to yesterday. He seemed very disappointed when I told him I was leaving, and that must have prompted his action. I felt terribly sorry, but it was out of my hands. I silently thanked Mr. Young for trusting me so much and for his actions. Incidentally, Mr. Young is a well-known local business tycoon and my biggest client. I believe his total assets are close to a billion dollars. The amount he had deposited was about 700 million. With its withdrawal, our branch must have suffered a significant blow. What? What does this mean? Mrs. Stewart's client said if she's gone, there's no point in keeping his money with us and withdrew everything. What? Lisa was so shocked that she stood with her mouth open, unable to speak. I wish I could have seen Lisa's reaction with my own eyes. A week had passed since I left. During that time, employees kept reaching out to me, informing me that numerous clients, just like Mr. Young, canceled their accounts upon learning of my departure. The staff, knowing that I was forced to resign, rather than leaving on my own, couldn't persuade these clients to stay. Word of my departure spread from customer to customer, leading to dozens of inquiries each day. Following these inquiries, the clients would invariably come in the next day to close their accounts. As a result, Lisa apparently spent her days pale-faced and fearful. The branch was even in jeopardy if the withdrawals continued. It was said that Lisa lived in fear, dreading the appearance of the next client withdrawing their account. Then I heard that an investigation from the headquarters was initiated. In just over a week since my departure, the total amount of withdrawn accounts had exceeded $2 billion. The assistant branch manager confronted Lisa. Why did you decide to let Mrs. Stewart go, Lisa? Anyone would realize that a veteran like Mrs. Stewart had long-standing relationships with our clients. How are you going to handle this situation? Every day she was besieged with anger and urgency. Then Alex, the director from headquarters, arrived for the investigation. Long time no see, Lisa. Seems like you're in quite a predicament. What happened? Oh, Alex, w welcome. Lisa's voice was completely turned upside down as she greeted him and the other employees struggled to hold back their laughter. I heard you recently let Mrs. Stewart go. Weren't you aware of her reputation? Mrs. Stewart was a recognized figure even at the headquarters. Lisa was genuinely unaware of my status and was shocked to learn that I was well known at headquarters. What? That plain-looking person? Lisa, appearances are irrelevant. Mrs. Stewart was diligent and perceptive, handling many long-term clients. They trusted her entirely. Didn't you know she's been commended several times in front of everyone at the company meetings? What? Listening to this exchange, Alex spoke quietly. Lisa, this situation is the result of your unilateral decision. You'll need to take responsibility. Prepare yourself. No, I had no idea. She was just leisurely cleaning and occasionally helping others. Why didn't anyone tell me? Lisa tried to defend herself in a panic. The assistant branch manager retorted. Don't blame me. It's ridiculous to judge Mrs. Stewart as incompetent just because you worked with her for a few days. And you let her go when I was away on a business trip. If you had consulted me, I would have definitely prevented it. Lisa hung her head, her shoulders trembling. Alex continued to speak to the assistant branch manager. Anyway, we will discuss this matter with the board. Also, we've reviewed your work history, Lisa. It appears you've been aggressively increasing contract numbers. We've received numerous complaints not just from the employees, but also from customers, all relating to accounts you handled. Lisa looked at Alex, her face on the verge of tears. Alex went on relentlessly. Our bank prides itself on honesty with customers. Your approach would never earn their trust. Moreover, you fail to recognize the efforts of dedicated employees like Mrs. Stewart. This incident has made it clear that you lack managerial skills. In any case, Lisa, don't expect a bright future. 
With that, Alex returned to headquarters. Lisa, I heard, collapsed on the spot, dazed and unable to move for a while. During my time as an employee, I had been nominated by several clients thanks to my long service at the counter. These included executives, CEOs, chairpersons, private investors and proprietors of large deals. The deposits I handled were no less than a few hundred million dollars, sometimes in the billions, like with Mr. Young. Unaware of this, Lisa's decision to fire me led to the loss of trust from these clients, who then moved their accounts elsewhere. It was a predictable outcome, all due to Lisa's rash judgment. Eventually, Lisa was stripped of her branch manager position for her responsibility in this matter, and was transferred to a remote branch to do the same counterwork she had looked down upon. Still maintaining her usual attitude and tone, she was avoided by both employees and customers, leaving her counter deserted. A transition to a contract position was being considered for her. If she had changed her attitude after being transferred, things might have been different, but her pride apparently prevented it. I find it deeply regrettable. Later, Alex, along with the assistant branch manager, personally visited my home to apologize. We're truly sorry for the way we treated you, Mrs. Stewart, a model employee. I sincerely apologize on behalf of Lisa. Mrs. Stewart, could you please consider returning to our bank? Mrs. Stewart, I implore you as well. We've caused you great discomfort and I'm truly sorry. That was my oversight. Our branch needs you. Please come back to us. They both pleaded for my return. Moved by their earnestness, I asked for some time to think. That night, after discussing this with my husband, he said, If they're that sincere, Tiffany, why not return if you feel it's right? Knowing that Lisa had been dealt with and they were so eager for my return, I saw no reason to refuse. The next day, I contacted the assistant branch manager and successfully returned to work. Upon my return, most of the clients who had closed their accounts came back. The assistant branch manager was overjoyed at both my return and the client's return. I doubt I'll ever see a grown adult cry so much in gratitude again. It turns out our branch was on the verge of being absorbed, but that was averted thanks to the returning clients. The assistant branch manager was now the acting branch manager due to Lisa's transfer. He's a bit timid, but a good supervisor who pays attention to those around him. I'm relied upon, so I must work hard to meet expectations. This incident has reminded us all how vital mutual trust is. And today, I continue to work diligently at the bank, supporting and being supported by my colleagues.